So GPU prices are actually coming down. This time, it's this guy again. This is Intel. They just reduced the price of the A750 to an extremely low amount. This is much lower than expected. Even this one, this is the A770 Special Edition. This one has also been on sale. We're going to talk about what other GPUs are in that price range. Believe it or not, as much as we talk about 4090s and 7900 XTX, this sort of class of GPU is extremely important. Important. A lot of people that go and buy a GPU, they're not going to go buy a $1,600 4090. They're going to buy something in that two to $300 range, which is basically where we're talking about. And it happens to be a very competitive range and one that NVIDIA is a little bit absent in because most of their GPUs don't compete in terms of performance to the price you're paying when you start to get to that two to $300 range. The 3060 and 3060 Ti, of course, are pretty good GPUs, but pricing in general is going to be a lot higher than what we're talking about here. If you can find a 3060 Ti, that's pretty good for around $300 or under, but then you're going to have to go into the used marketplace. You're going to have to take a look at different GPUs that are, are available. Maybe something like from today's video sponsor, Jawa.gg. I've actually used this myself. It's a marketplace where you can buy and sell similar to something like eBay. It's going to be a lot more curated and they have a lot more focus on making sure that the marketplace is somewhere that's fair. It's going to be safe. That has a lot more real gamers involved. Today's GPUs being so expensive. If you have a marketplace like Java, you're going to have lower fees and a lot of seller and buyer protections. New buyers can get $10 off their first order with the code welcome 10 happy shopping. And I hope you find some awesome GPUs case in point, the a 750 that's a GPU. That's going to be really a 1080 DP, high refresh rate gaming GPU. It can do some type of ray tracing. Of course, these GPUs are not necessarily the ones where you really want to be, you know, turning on ray tracing, especially if you go to AMD or anything like that, but it definitely can do it. And ray tracing is actually kind of impressive on these Intel GPUs for the performance that they're putting out. And then we have the A770, but to compete with the A750 at around $225, remember they dropped the price to $249 a few weeks ago. So the biggest competition performance to price wise in this class is going to be from AMD, actually the 6600 and the 6600 XT, 6650 XT. It's going to depend on the price that you can find them at. It's going to really vary. Some retailers will have them around that $200 mark. Some of them like the 6650 XT will definitely be higher in price, but they have pretty stable drivers. Um, you know, I guess as far as an AMD can be considered stable and even even Nvidia has driver problems too. But overall, I just mean that AMD has more mature drivers than Intel, which has been really working hard on improvements from at least what we can see with driver updates on the Intel side. They've been a lot more frequent than on the AMD side, and it looks like they're genuinely trying to fix issues. I was kind of hard on Intel when it first came out, and I said, this is just a GPU for tinkerers, but it's starting to turn into a GPU that you can actually basically recommend for somebody who wants 1080p performance. It has some good things going for it. And depending on the Direct X 12 game that you're going to play on it, that's really where they shine. Of course, it did get improved support for older games like Direct X 9 and Direct X 11. Now, I've even seen this guy, the special edition, for under $300. Like I saw it on Amazon just before I did the video. That's not too bad, actually, because 16 gigabytes of VRAM on here. I even did a, a video comparing this to the 4070 Ti, and some of the results were interesting. It was pretty smooth on here. When you approach a really VRAM limited situation, because even the memory bit bus is faster here than on the 4070 Ti. But in general, of course, 4070 Ti is a faster GPU for everything else. I'm just pointing out the VRAM differences. But for 300 bucks down from 349, this guy is definitely not too bad. I mean, you could definitely find like a 6700 XT, maybe a 6750 XT. Hard to say if they're going to be under 300. That pricing really varies from retailer to retailer, but I would still take a 6700 XT over this, I think, unless this one gets even a little bit cheaper, like the 275. And then we have to look at if Nvidia has any options. The 3050 doesn't interest me too much in this price 
price range, I think all of these other GPUs either match it or outperform it in most cases. But in general, as much as Nvidia dominates that sort of upper echelon of GPUs, when you start talking about that two to three hundred dollar range, I think it really is AMD and then somewhat Intel now, even though Intel's numbers in terms of selling GPUs aren't anywhere near what AMD or not even close to Nvidia, of course, in terms of market share, they're definitely accelerating a lot of what's going on. We're at the point now, who knows which direction Arc is going to go in. They're trying with drivers. Who knows how sales are? The market conditions aren't that great for selling GPUs right now with a lot of stuff in stock. So it's hard to say if they're going to make it. Like that's my point here. I don't know how far Intel Arc is going to go into the future. Remember, if they stop selling them and that's not really going in Intel's way financially, driver support will probably lapse in the future as well. And you may see this be pretty much an unsupported dead GPU. Worst case scenario. If you're optimistic, Intel, and it does have a lot of resources, keeps pumping money into ARC even when it's not really profitable. Eventually, when it's stable enough and maybe next generation, it can compete. And then that means more of a user base and better drivers. That's the optimistic side. So we may end up somewhere in the middle, especially if things don't turn around too heavily. I mean, even NVIDIA is focusing more on AI and those type of GPUs because the gaming market is certainly a little bit depressed right now with not that many sales compared to how it was the last few few years and AMD just kind of going in that same slow pace as well. But they should be careful because they're going to be Intel's first competition. And if Intel does a really good job with these GPUs in terms of updating drivers, and if they keep dropping the price like they've been dropping it, AMD could be the first one in some really big trouble. AMD always tried to keep the price at a certain point to sort of be on par with Nvidia, which may be their downfall. If Intel is willing to lower the price and they have a lot more potential resources because of the size of the company to sort of have a loss leader like this, very possible that we could see Intel match or even overtake AMD in the future. It's not happening quite yet, but gamers have an open spot for a third competitor. They're kind of tired of that duopoly with prices being so high. And of course, you do spend a little bit less on AMD compared to Nvidia, but you also get a little bit less in terms of ray tracing and certain features, content creators. There are certain things you don't get a full breadth of. If Intel could combine those elements into something that's great for performance, price, content creators, gamers, and with ray tracing, which a lot of technology will use in the future in terms of gaming and path tracing, that's somewhere where Intel could overleap AMD and AMD would then be the third one in sort of the line there, which would be unfortunate, but that's just how competition is. And Nvidia, at least for now, seems to be well ahead, but not in that two to $300 tier, at least in terms of GPUs you can buy today. While the user base is heavy in NVIDIA still, you'll see a lot of 1660s, a lot of, of course, 3050s and 3060s in the market in terms of what you can buy present itself as a better value. And must be said, some of these new GPUs are definitely looking decent from Intel, AMD, and we'll see if NVIDIA lowers some of that pricing so they remain competitive in that segment as well. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.